Very thankful that some of these stories are going viral. This is one of those stories that did go viral. Not only because it's a story of a missing child and what happened to his mom, but what where they ultimately found this child is really, I think, the thing that captured people's attention. They wanted justice. I'm very thankful that platforms like ours, the news, and other people thought that this story was that important to talk about and spread it and make it go viral. Let's continue to keep that thing going. Let me give you guys a quick disclaimer before we start so you'll know what type of content that you're getting into. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Now, note lately I've been giving Texas a lot of L's, but Florida, y'all going to have to take the L this time yet again. St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm getting this information from fox13newsnow.com. So thank you for the article. Excuse me, fox13news.com. I just added some extra in there. The missing two-year-old who was the subject of a statewide Amber Alert has been found dead in an area near, near Dale Holmes Park, investigators said. Now, here's what's new. The child's father, who has been identified by authorities as Thomas Mosley. I think I have his picture in here. Let me make sure. Yes. Look, guys, I know y'all don't like me to talk about people's looks. If you were to hear this story and then see this picture, you'd have to ask yourself, does this not look like the face of a man who would do something like this? I just think that it fits. It's just like sometimes when you put the shoe on, it fits. When you stereotype a person, sometimes it fits, okay? The child's father, who's been identified as Thomas Mosley, will be arrested on two counts of first-degree murder in both Taylor Mosley or yeah, Taylor Mosley and the two-year-old's mother, Passion Jeffries Debts. Now, the mother on the right-hand side of the screen, I don't mean any disrespect, but her name, Passion, is spelled P-A-S-H-U-N. Another one of those unique urban names. I digress. I might not like it personally, but it is what it is. I mean, no disrespect to the family, to the, to the deceased mother, but it's just a unique way of naming our people. St. Petersburg Police Chief uh, Anthony Holloway said that the St. Pete police officers who had been in Dale Holmes Park all afternoon spotted an alligator. Please hear this, ladies and gentlemen, an alligator. That's why there was a picture of an alligator. I don't think this is the exact one, but alligators get pretty damn big. Where is it at? Look at that. And they, these things are in these wetland areas like crazy. I've seen them walk across golf courses. I've seen them like climb over fences. They, I'd, I'd be scared to live in Florida with that many alligators around. They spotted an alligator with an object in its mouth. Detectives got closer to the alligator, which was in Lake uh, Magri, and fired a shot at it. I wonder why they do that if they weren't sure what it was. Once the alligator released it, authorities said they retrieved two-year-old Talon's body intact. Chief Holloway did confirm the alligator died. So they shot and killed the alligator. So they ended up figuring this out after the fact, which I believe that's correct. I could be wrong unless I read it wrong, unless they wrote the article wrong. Talon's body was found several miles from his home, according to police. They're still working on to confirm the cause of death because I can almost guarantee you the alligator didn't kill him. The alligator probably came in and tried to consume this baby's body after the baby was murdered and tossed into the river or died because he was tossed into the river. Just really sad. We didn't want to find him this way, but at least we can bring some closure to the family now, said Chief Holloway. Again, there is emotions up and down because they're investigating. They were following leads and they're hoping that they could find him alive, which obviously they did not. 
Chief Holloway confirmed this in a Friday evening press conference. He also said Jeffrey, who was found dead in her apartment, Passion Jeffrey, the mom, was found at Lincoln Shore Apartments and she had been stabbed multiple times. Now, I don't know if they say it here. It doesn't look like they do. Let me show y'all something real quick. Let me show you something. Like Jim Carrey would say. Give me a moment here. The mother was stabbed. Where is it at? One hundred times. I'm finding that information on a website called WFLA.com. If you don't like me reporting that as accurate information, go to their website. It says St. Pete mother stabbed over a hundred times. Let's see if I can get the rest of the, uh, the uh, article pulled up here. Hold on. Before toddler was thrown into the lake, according to an affidavit, mother stabbed over a hundred times before toddler was thrown in the lake. Now, it didn't specify whether he was dead before he was thrown in the lake or after. I don't even think that part about it even really matters that much. Besides, we'll find out in court. A hundred times. Do y'all know what we call that? For people who've been watching my channel for a long time. When a person can commit and act like that. Thank you. Somebody in the chat caught it. It was personal. That is called. Um, what what do they call it? It's, it's a specific thing that they call it. It's um. And passion, uh, and it's an impassioned rage. What I, I forget, what's the term? I'll remember it here in a second. I'm having a brain fart. It's an, it's an act of rage. I forget what it's called, but it's very, very personal because it takes a lot of energy, a lot of strength, and a lot of hate in a person's heart to show that in their actions. A crime of passion, that's what I'm looking for. A crime of passion. 100 times he stabbed this woman. Look, I'm going to tell you guys this. Let me tell you guys something. Just to be real. Thank you. I've been mad at women I've had relationships with. I've been mad at women I've had children with. I've had them be disrespectful. I've had women I've dealt with in general. Maybe not baby mama. So let me X that out. But I've had women in general say things about me that weren't true, say things about me that could have got me hurt, said some just some real nasty things about me. Yes, you get mad and you might think you want to do some things. You can't act on this. You can't behave this way, nor can you justify doing this for any reason. It's inexcusable. Anything less than life in prison or the death penalty for this man would be uncivilized. To be real, there is no reason for this man to be using our oxygen anymore, for this man to be eating meals off of the county dime, for taxpayers to be paying for him to stay alive. I don't see the point of that. Not only for what you did to the mom, the mom was a grown person. The mom got out overpowered by this man. Dealing with this crazy man. And matter of fact, can we get a hashtag when you date thugs, you date death? Is this not something we talk about on my channel all the time? That's a phrase that I've coined. It's a hashtag that I created to signify to ladies that I care about y'all. But I think y'all are making very dumb choices. You're making dumb choices for boyfriends. You're making very dumb choices who you're making children with and you're making very dumb choices who you're bringing your children around. I think that's a fair statement. I don't think that's harsh. And I think anybody who has some self-respect would understand where I'm coming from because the number one thing that we need to do is we need to advocate for our children first, put your children first, put the kids first and then ask yourself, did this person cause this child to be in this level of danger and the answer is yes because adults we are the ones who have to have the discernment think these situations out and say would this pose a danger to my kid you can't foresee everything 
But if you know a person has a, a criminal record, if you know a person that has threatened you before, if you know a person that has whooped your ass before, huh? If you know a person don't have a job, not doing something productive with their life, I'm just sorry. This man just looks like the face of a person who don't have a job or a future. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like he just looks like somebody that just don't have a purpose in life. But they're always are the first ones to get girlfriends, always the first ones to the table when it comes to having sex. Is it a desperation thing? Is it a is it a self-esteem thing? Regardless of if it's something emotional, I think we have to start making more logical choices about who we are dealing with when it comes to these relationships. That's the message that I really want to extend from this story. I can skip some of this. And just say that they're working to confirm his cause of death. They found his, his body several miles from the home. Chief Holloway confirmed on a Friday news conference said that Jeffrey, who was found dead in her apartments at Lincoln Shore Apartments, had been stabbed multiple times, which we just found out was about 100 times of being stabbed. The St. Peter mother of a missing toddler had been living at Link Lincoln Shore Apartments for about a month before she was found dead, her family told reporters. Her two-year-old boy was last seen Wednesday afternoon, which prompted the Amber Alert. They described Jeffrey as someone who always tried to make people smile. They're talking about the mom. She liked to tell jokes and would try to rap for fun. Passion, the mother, was, always, was also outspoken. Thomas Mosley, the guy who caused her death, was named a person of interest Friday morning. Police noted that they didn't believe the child was with him and he refused to talk to detectives. Chief Holloway did say the father is still in the hospital and has asked for an attorney. Uh, I'm not going to go with this timeline. You guys can actually go to their website and follow this timeline. I don't really feel the need to read all of that. Because it's a lot. So let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage. And let me let you hear the uh, news stories. Because there's a few of them that we need to get to. So here we go. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And for those watching this story, if y'all would do me a favor and hit that thumbs up, it'll share this video so more people can see it and notify more of our subscribers. So if y'all will, please hit that thumbs up because we want to have one thumb up for everybody watching. So here we go. Let's get it. St. Petersburg, Florida police chief announcing that with great sadness, the body of Talon Mosley has been found. That two-year-old boy who was missing for some time. His father now is being charged with two counts of first degree murder. Let's listen to the chief announce this very, very sad news in this brief press conference that was held just moments ago. It's with great sadness I have to inform you here today that tail and body has been found. It is my condolences going out to the family and to his loved ones. We are sorry that it had to end this way. Through investigative technique, we were able to find an area around Del Home Park that led the investigators to that area. The, the detectives had been there all afternoon, and while they were there, they were spotted an alligator with an object in, in his mouth. As the, as the detectives got closer, they fired one round uh, to the alligator. The alligator dropped the object that he had in his mouth and we were able to retrieve Talon's body intact. The father, Thomas Mosley, is now being charged with two counts of first degree murder. I can tell you now that Talon's mom, Miss Jeffries, her body was stabbed multiple times. Until the medical examiner has a chance to look at Taylor's body, we cannot tell you the cause of death. I would like to thank all the law enforcement agencies that assisted us today or since Wednesday, and a special thanks to our detectives here at St. Pete Police Department. These men and women have worked hard. I'm going to skip through some of this, but I'm going to try to let him get through most of his uh, press conference. So maybe like another minute or two. Since 
Wednesday at 2.30, trying to find Taylor, hoping for Taylor for a better outcome. But again, that didn't happen. Needless to say, tomorrow we don't need the volunteers to come out to assist us in looking for Talon, but I just want to again thank everybody for volunteering to come out to help us. With that, remember this is an ongoing investigation, so I will try to answer some of your questions. And after almost two days of looking for little Talon, I know you've had so many crews on the ground searching, brought in you know, all hands on deck, like you said. I mean, this has got to be tough for your team to you know, see things end like this after all your hard work. It's very tough because these men and women are getting sense from Wednesday at, at 2.30. They've been working tirelessly trying to find Talon. And we didn't want to find him this way, but at least we can bring some closure to that family now. Uh, again, there's emotions up and down because as they're doing uh, investigating, they're following up the lead that we were hoping that we could find him alive. So, Right now, breaking news on News Channel 8. The alligator dropped the object that he had in his mouth, and we were able to retrieve Talon's body intact. An unthinkable outcome to the search for this little boy. Tonight's shock and grief for a St. Petersburg family. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. I'm Jennifer Lee. Thank you for joining us. In the last few hours, we have learned that awful news that two-year-old Talon has died. The search began 48 hours ago when his mother was found brutally murdered in their apartment. Talon's body was found tonight at Dell Holmes Park, several miles from where he and his mother lived. The boy's father now faces two murder charges. News Channel S Trevor Sahaki is joining us live from the park tonight. Trevor, I know you were there when the chief gave this update. Just uh, terrible news to share with everyone. Yeah, Keith, unfortunately, this is the outcome no one wanted to see. Police said their investigation led them here to Lake Magary, where they had been searching all day and finally found young Talon just a few hours ago. Family of both Talon Mosley and Passion Jeffrey are grieving tonight after Talon was found dead. It is my condolences going out to the family and to his loved ones. We are sorry that it had to end this way. St. Pete Police Chief Anthony Holloway said detectives saw an alligator with an object in its mouth at Dell Holmes Park. That's across town from the apartment where Jeffrey was stabbed to death. They fired one round uh, to the alligator. The alligator dropped the object that he had in his mouth, and we were able to retrieve Talon's body intact. Talon's father, Thomas Mosley, is charged with two counts of first-degree murder for both Talon and Passion's deaths. We didn't want to find him this way, but at least we can bring... And let me give credit to the chat. Somebody in the chat actually just called something that was very important. If the police had not gotten there in the time that they did, there might not have been a body to find with these hungry alligators that were literally just taking advantage of what they thought was a meal in the water. So there might not have been a body to find. So we were very lucky to have that. And they said his body was intact. So... It's just scary to think about that. Closure to that family now. Earlier today, that family spoke about mother and son. He's Martin. always calling his mom on his cell phone. Yeah, always. He misses mom. They call each other all the time. She really loves Taylor. Please don't know how Taylor got to the lake or the cause of death for the toddler. We just want to say um, that Taylor is a beautiful little boy, and he's really loving and caring. According to Chief Holloway, Thomas Mosley is still in the hospital. Police said Wednesday, the last time Passion and Talon were seen alive, was Mosley's 21st birthday. And Chief Holloway said that while he appreciated everyone coming out and trying to help find young Talon, of course, that's no longer necessary now. Okay. It's with great sadness I have to inform you here today that Talon's body has been found. So this one's a little bit louder. This is going to be kind of short, though. It is my condolences going out to the family and to his loved ones. We are sorry that it had to end this way. Through investigative technique, we were able to find an area around Dell Holmes Park that led the investigators to that area. The, the detectives had been there all afternoon, and while they were there, they were spotted an alligator with an object in, in his mouth. As the, as the detectives got closer, they fired one round 
uh, to the alligator. The alligator dropped the object that he had in his mouth and we were able to retrieve Talon's body intact. The father, Thomas Mosley, is now being charged with two counts of first degree murder. So this was the this was the child's dad. This was the father, and apparently the biological father. Isn't that something? I can tell you now that Taylor's mom, Mrs. Jeffries, her body was stabbed multiple times. A hundred times. Until the medical examiner has a chance to look at Taylor's body, we cannot tell you the cause of death. I would like to thank all the law enforcement agency that assisted us today or since Wednesday and a special thanks to our detectives here at St. Pete Police Department. These men and women have worked tirelessly since Wednesday at 2.30 trying to find Taylor, hoping for Taylor for a better outcome. But again, that didn't happen. These to say tomorrow we don't need the volunteers to come out to assist us in looking for Talon, but I just want to again thank everybody for volunteering to come out to help us. With that, remember this is an ongoing investigation. And that was weird, then they cut the volume down on the video, but let me say this in closing. Again, please, ladies, I say this with love, I say this with respect to the family and for everybody listening. This is why it is so important to be more careful about who you date, who you procreate with, to know the background of a person. Do a background check and don't be afraid of that. If that person makes it difficult for you or makes you feel threatened or makes you feel like you're a bad person for wanting to check on their record to find out what they actually have, have been charged with, or maybe if they're on the run or whatever, if they got warrants or whatever the case is, that's probably a good indicator, no matter how much you love them, how many, how many jokes they tell you, how much swag they got on, how many pieces of jewelry they had on, how fly they was looking when you saw them, or how much you wanted this person. I don't believe it's worth your life, and I don't believe that it's worth your child's life. And I wish that we would value ourselves and have more not only self-awareness, but um, self-esteem. That's the word I'm looking for. More self-esteem about ourselves to just date better, make better choices. And that has to start off when we're kids. We have to raise good babies in order to be good adults. And we have to have the mother and father household intact to do so. We're going to end up continuing to have this horrible cycle, this horrible pattern of just unstable creatures that should have never had opportunities to be around children until we fix that and plug it up, okay? Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I agree with the people in the chat. They say this could have been a blessing in disguise to be able to find this baby's body intact because they might not have been able to do it. But thank you guys so much. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Keep wondering if there's a day that's going to come around where I don't have to report a story out of Texas. Texas, we're taking another L. Even though we had a, a, a great tournament out here for the NCAA. But then, you know, because that was the highlight, you know, great tournament, very exciting games. But then we turn around and have stories like this that just bring my spirits down because I keep wondering, why does this keep happening to our babies with, with the information age? With so many YouTubers out there talking about these stories, preparing people for the dangers of certain choices that they make, and we still end up having stuff like this we report on all the time. So before we get into the details of this story out of Texas, let me give you the disclaimer if you don't mind. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I was thinking about this. We could almost call this bad dad week because these men, these alleged fathers are just making us all look bad. 
every time I keep saying, you know, men get out there, keep bending your kids' lives, do good stuff, and and respect the time that if you're in a situation where you don't have custody of the kid and you're having to to rely on the mother, then we got to start putting more respect on that. Not only demanding our rights as fathers, but when we have that time, we absolutely have to treat our, our children in a precious way. And I want y'all to look at this beautiful baby girl. I want to get a solo shot of her and look at this angel. Because I remember when my daughter was this age, it don't seem like it was that long ago. My daughter will be grown in two years. Isn't that crazy? Like, it's just crazy to think how quickly time flies. But I remember my daughter very vividly when she was two years old because there were a lot of firsts. I mean, she was she was walking and talking and just doing so many things. So it was very memorable. We used to go to the mall a lot. So I have very fine memories of my daughter being two years old. A 25-year-old Texas man, which we know as the father, and I'm getting this story from people.com. So thank you for the article. A Texas father is accused of killing his two-year-old daughter during a police chase while he was on a FaceTime call with the girl's mom. <clears throat> so here's the thing. A lot of people might wonder, maybe why you haven't heard this, maybe why the video hadn't circulated, not that you would even want to see it. But social media had got so bad that people were committing these murders and hurting people, injuring people, fighting people and stuff like that, that um, platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter had to be on alert and try to take those videos down as soon as quickly as they can find out about them because people would share them, download them, repost them and continue to keep posting this violent content out there, which didn't need to be out there to begin with. So I can say, to an extent, that's a that's a good thing that we don't spread that type of stupidity. This man was on a FaceTime call. What were you mad about? I don't understand what was going on in here. What was going on up here? But more importantly, what was going on in your heart? But if you look at his face, you look at the slap. Let, let, let's take a step back because I don't know if that necessarily means anything, if he's just being cool. Now, back in the day, if you had though, if you had your eyebrows as a, as a dude, because I come from gang culture, so I know this. Gangs pretty much started when I was growing up, what we know as the current gang uh, landscape. But when you did those slits in your eyebrows, that usually signified some type of thug gang behavior. Now, I'm not saying he was in a gang, but what I am saying is it makes me question, especially behind his vicious, careless behavior. So I'm going to say he's a thug based on his behavior because thug is not a skin color. It's a behavior. On Monday morning, DeAndre, DeAndre, not Deontay, not Dion, but Dion, T-R-A-Y. Another one of those hood names. Hashtag stupid names equals stupid things. DeAndre Flanagan picked up his daughter by the name of Sevea, which is spelled with a Z. Z-E-V-A-Y-A Flanagan picked her up from daycare. He went to Walmart where Sevea's mother worked and allegedly demanded to see her cell phone. Citing court documents. Once she gave him the cell phone, he allegedly hit her multiple times, then fled with Zavea in a vehicle. Again, you're talking about the value, valuing yourself. This man didn't value himself, nor I don't believe that the mother valued herself because you'd have to ask yourself, was this the first time he's ever been violent with you? Probably not. Was this the first time he ever accused you of cheating? Probably not. Was this the first time that you knew that this asshole was violent? Probably not. But you stay with them. You make kids with them. You make promises to them that you cannot possibly live up to. Literally and figuratively. A police chase then ensued. Eventually, Savea's mother, who was identified by ABC 13 as Kirsten Watson, that name, K-A-I-R-S-T-E-N, K, 
Hairston. Made contact with Flanagan on FaceTime. And I know the mom ain't going to like me talking about it like that. But it's real because I want y'all to start putting your kids first. When you put love of a man over your kids, then I just can't believe that you love your kids as much as you say that you do. Because of the type of men that you're dating. I continue to keep saying that. Let me know what I'm wrong about saying that. Made contact with Flanagan on FaceTime while using the phone of Zavea's grandmother, who was also working at Walmart, according to the outlet. However, Flanagan allegedly grew angry after he asked for the, for the cell phone password, but didn't get it. Court documents allege Flanagan then started hitting and choking Savea while Watson was still on FaceTime and watching the attack on her daughter. Let's pause right there. Let's pause right there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have the difficult conversation. Because I know I've seen some people say, because I was looking at the comment section on Facebook where people were talking about this story. I think that the mother, whatever he was asking for, whether it be the pin number to your life savings or the pin number to your freaking phone, the mother should have gave it to him. Please tell me because I know I'm going to have two sides of this where people agree and then people disagree. Do you agree with my statement or do you disagree and you agree that the mother shouldn't have gave him the password to her phone and let him look through her phone. Because at that point, you'd have to ask yourself a couple of questions. So let me be Picasso for a moment and I'm going to paint a picture for you. This is what I do. So let me paint a picture. First of all, if you love your child as much as you say you do, you would do anything to save their life, including giving up your privacy to save their life in a life and death situation. Whatever the hell you had in the phone, you are exposed. Give it up. The jig's up. Give it up. Your daughter's life is on the line. And you, and you, and you, so, so here's what actually happened. I look at this baby's face and you think the mom loves her child, but does she really? Kirsten, she's still alive. She's in Texas. She can contact the show, the AFC Matters at gmail.com. Let me know if I'm wrong. Family or friends, let me know if I'm wrong. If you loved your daughter, why would you, what do you have in your phone that's more important than your daughter's life? Pictures were more important than your daughter's life. Ex-boyfriends, more important in your daughter's life? Who you were chatting with in Messenger or how many dick pics you probably had in Messenger was more important in your daughter's life? What secret dating profiles you had, probably more important in your daughter's life? Who you have been on the phone with, been conversating with, more important in your daughter's life? These are all assumptions. But there was something in that phone that you said, I don't want this man to ever know. And I'm going to take it to the grave with me. And I'm not giving him my password no matter what. My question would be this. What were you doing that was so bad that you didn't want to come to light? That you were willing to sacrifice your daughter's life potentially to keep that information hidden. All I'm speaking on is facts. If you take your emotions out of it. And ask yourself. Did this mother put her cell phone information. The stuff that she was doing behind a password wall. And put that as more important than her daughter's life. Then I think. The mother is not a good person and she caused help participate in the death of her daughter and precipitated this. She, she took her daughter to the thug zoo, left her daughter in the thug lion cage, came back with a stick and got the poking at the lion cage and then wonder why the lion behaved the way that it did and mauled this child to death.
we this is where we have to have the difficult conversations and this is what i think makes my video about this different than anybody else's because number one i've had people from texas i've had people from all different walks of life even people out of the country that have said well well we're gonna do something to you we're gonna beat you up we're gonna flag you we're gonna do this and that to you dj just j for what you said about that mother she's suffering right now y'all I'm pretty sure the child was suffering when her own father, her own flesh and blood, was ending her life by choking her. How painful do you think that was to that baby who was confused, who was scared, who was crying, and she couldn't do a single thing to defend herself. She was physically too small. Her body was too weak to stop her father from choking the life out of her. How about what did this baby have to go through? You would have to ask the difficult question. What are we willing to give up? People say that I would give my last breath to save my child. But this mother wouldn't even give up her password. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Oh, I know some of y'all ain't gonna like that. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Man, social media has gotten that bad. This man didn't ask you for the PIN number to your, to your life savings, to your credit card. This man asked you for the pin number to your cell phone what did you have in that cell phone did you have like government documents like or like were you working for the cia for area 54 or something like 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 what were you hiding in that phone that was worth your daughter's life but if you guys are watching this do me a favor and hit that thumbs up i don't know if i already gave the fair uses but let me at least Put it on the screen so you guys can see fair usage under USC 107. I could be just having a brain fart right now, but please hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. A tragic story here in Northwest Harris County. A toddler was killed after her father allegedly led deputies on a chase while she was in that car. And just a devastating story. And we saw it unfold live on ABC 13 yesterday. Now, families tell, uh, family members tell ABC 13 that her name was Zavaya and she was only two years old. Her father right now is behind bars this morning with some major charges. ABC 13 reporter Jeff Ealing live outside the Harris County Courthouse this morning. Uh, Jeff, what more do we know here about the suspect? Well, we can tell you that 25-year-old DeAndre Flanagan is going to be charged with murder. That is according to Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. And sources are telling ABC 13 that there is evidence that this two-year-old girl named Zavaya may have been strangled in her father's car. This all started when DeAndre Flanagan took his daughter from daycare and then had a violent confrontation with the girl's mother. Here's something else, and this is pure speculation. Pure speculation. I don't know this man, and I've made a lot of bad assumptions calling him a thug, and I just think that his actions show that he is a terrible person. Here's something we didn't think about. What if he had questions about the validity of him being the DNA biological father of this child? Did they go get a DNA test? Is he on child support? Does he know that for a fact? The only thing like I could think that he might be traumatized enough behind to do this. And it's still wrong no matter what. I mean, you still can't be a punk and do this. But was he traumatized enough to think that this child maybe didn't belong to him? Were there some questions about the validity of his parental status? It still doesn't make it right. This is not how you handle it. And, it, and I still think he needs life in prison or maybe even the death penalty for what he did. But I'm just saying there has to be some reason why she was just flat out like the phone's more important than my daughter's life. I'm just throwing that out there.
That led to a police chase that ended after Flanagan crashed into several other cars and then eventually stopped his vehicle. A SWAT team had to be called out to arrest Flanagan. And once he was in custody, officials tried to save the life of two-year-old Zavia. She was taken to the hospital by life flight, but later died from her injuries. And overnight, Sheriff Ed Gonzalez sent out a tweet saying that Flanagan will be charged with murder. Officials stunned by the injuries to this little girl. As a father, as just a human being, for anyone to use a child, a precious, defenseless child of two years old, it just broke my heart to see. Here's my question, because I know that people might have a difference of opinion. Am I putting this all on the mother, or did I say that he needs to man up? That's actually a pretty fair statement. It's a two-way street. Because if you go back and listen at the beginning, I actually say it. That this was his fault. I'm telling you now. He deserves life in prison. Or the death penalty for what he did. So we're talking about. Holding him 100% accountable. All we're doing is. Castigating the mother and just saying. Don't add to it. I think that's a fair statement. We're just saying. Don't precipitate it. If you know he's angry. Don't make him more angry. Especially when he's got. Your baby. That's all I'm saying. Whatever he asked for. If he asked for the password to your safe room or whatever, give him the password. Matter of fact, when you're when you're working at a job or you're working at a bank, when they, when they come up to you and they and they give you a note and, and the note's got something on it and they slide it on over there to you, you read it and it says give up the money or else. What are the banks training their employees to do? Give up the money. Don't be a hero. Right? When people get robbed at the ATM, do they not tell them? Type in your password. Give up the money. Save yourself. Then call the authorities. Is that not what they do? Right? When people come in and rob a restaurant, what do they tell them to do? Get on the ground. Give up your wallets or whatever it is that they're asking for. Let them leave. Then call the police. They're not asking for anybody to be a hero. You're not trained to do that. There was absolutely no reason not to give up your pass. I want to know what's a good reason not to give up your password on your phone. Please, Somebody please tell me. Because I'm really thinking about that right now. What would so maybe we could ask that? Maybe I could put a poll in there somewhere where you guys can maybe answer that question. What is a good, valid reason not to give up your password if somebody is threatening to harm your daughter, or you can see that they're getting agitated to the point and they have possession of your child? What's a good reason not to give up your password? Just curious, or um, you know, injured. All right, so let's talk about what's going to happen next. It might be happening later today. That would be the first appearance in court for DeAndre Flanagan. Again, according to the sheriff, he will be facing a murder charge. We are waiting for that first court appearance, and as soon as it happens, we will let you know the details. For having his bond increased to $2 million, a 25-year-old Houston area father could be facing capital murder charges. This depends on the autopsy of his two-year-old daughter, Zavea, whom he is accused of choking and killing during a SWAT situation on Monday. KPRC 2's Rowan Logan joins us live near the... Let me answer this real quick. Somebody in the chat said, I think he found stuff he didn't like. No, he didn't. So let me go back over this point because I don't think I made this point clearly. So let me apologize. Let me apologize to the audience because maybe I didn't make this point clear. The reason that he ended up choking his daughter was because she did not give up in OT, did not give up the password. Let me make sure and read this again from people.com. Let me make sure I read this right. She gave him the cell phone. He allegedly hit her multiple times. Then he drew, he got in his car and drove off. He fled in a vehicle. Flanagan allegedly grew angry after he asked for the cell phone password, but did not receive it. 
Flanagan grew angry after he asked for the cell phone password but did not receive. And I'm pretty sure I said that already. So that means he got the phone, left with the phone, and realized he didn't have the password. He called her, asked for the password, and she said no. Let me quote it again. He asked for the cell phone password, but didn't receive it, which means she declined to give him the password. Am I reading that wrong? Please go to people.com. www.people.com. Look up this article and tell me if I'm reading this wrong. He hit her in the Walmart. Then he left with her phone. I, I understand that some people might feel like I'm putting too much emphasis on the password. And I honestly don't think that I'm putting enough emphasis on it. I think I should probably put more blame on the mom. Okay. So let me paint this scenario again. Even though I just painted it a second ago. I know y'all are going to be like, sorry, I didn't have my volume on. My bad. So, this man was angry at her for whatever reason, went to the daycare, picked up his daughter, went to the daughter's mom's job where grandma also works at with her and demanded her phone. He then allegedly put his hands on her because this is according to her words. We don't know that for a fact, but I'm sure Walmart surveillance could probably tell us exactly what happened. So, in some point, he hit her multiple times. She gave up her phone. And then he left with her phone and the daughter. And then she gra she took or asked for grandma's phone. And grandma gave her her phone. And then at some point, one of them contacted the other person. So I think that she called him on FaceTime from grandma's phone. While he was in the car, he had already drove off. Then. Matter of fact, this portion of it is actually coming from, I'm pretty sure this is coming from the mom. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. It doesn't even specify who said this. But this sounds like, because look, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. According to them picking this man up, they had to have a SWAT team pick him up. He hasn't given a statement yet. Do you think that this man would have told the story himself? This sounds like a first person witness account of this story, which means the mom. So the mom told this story. The mom says she got hit. The mom says she gave up the phone. He left with the phone and the daughter fled in the car. They somehow got in contact with each other. And he realized he didn't have the password to the phone. Oh, so she probably actually FaceTimed his phone because he had his phone also. So while they on FaceTime, he's saying, give me the password to your phone. And she declined to. When he didn't get it, that's when he choked her daughter on camera how else would anybody know that unless the mom would have seen it either grandma saw it or the mom saw it because it was grandma's phone that made the call so grandma would have had to give it up access to the i don't even like I, I i feel like 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 why am i repeat myself about this like that's literally what happened so am I making a big deal about this? You should have gave up the password. You're damn right I am. Because why not give up the password? Why are we even arguing that? Why would you not have to give up your password when somebody is angry and has your child? That's just not a, that's just not a smart thing to argue. The two-year-old's grandfather tells me that a wish, the family that is, wishes the suspect didn't receive a bond. If you'd like to help the family with funeral arrangements, they've created a GoFundMe. You can find that link on our website at clicktohouston.com. Reporting live down. 
And we'll talk about the GoFundMe here in just a second because there's more to talk about with that. All right. Well, happening today, we do expect to... Today, a judge doubled the bond of a father accused in the death of his child during a police chase. Yeah, prosecutors say murder charges against DeAndre Flanagan could be upgraded to capital murder depending on the results of the autopsy. So we have people saying that he still would have harmed the baby. So why not give up the password? So you're saying at least I saved the information that was on my phone? Come on, man. Come on, seriously. I, I, I can't even believe what I'm even reading. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to. I'm just hoping that people can kind of see what I'm trying to, to paint as a picture here. Maybe I'm just not a good painter. So if he would have harmed the daughter anyway, when he asked for the password, why not give it up? Then there would be no reason for anybody like me to say you should not have held the password hostage while this while this man is threatening your daughter and, and acting erratic with your daughter. Especially after he beat you up in a Walmart. Whatever he asked for, you should have gave it to him. I think giving up a password is something simple. You don't even have to physically do that. You can just say, here's the password. 0135. Boom. There you go. Now what? It's, it's kind of like, like playing your hand. Have you guys ever played cards before? You got to play things smart. And at least if you play your hand, you put your cards on the table. There's nothing else that you can do. You're like, hey, here it is. You've put it out on the line. I'm giving you, I'm acquiescing to your insane demands. Now what you going to do? Don't harm my baby. Give it up. I don't even know why we would even dispute that. That's just, it's just a wild thought to me. Two-year-old little girl. Tonight we hear from the child's mother, Jason Miles, live from the Harris County Jail with the latest. Jason. Hey there, Lynn. Yeah, the suspect, DeAndre Flanagan, is now being held down here on a $2 million bond increased this morning by a judge from $1 million. The mother of his child believes Flanagan just did not want them to move on without him. Photos of two-year-old Zavea reminds her heartbroken mother, Kirsten Watson, of the simple things she'll miss. I give her her baths, we lay together, we sleep together, like, and now I won't be able to do any of that anymore. Zavea's father, DeAndre Flanagan, appeared in court for the first time this morning, two days after allegedly murdering the toddler. I'm just trying to wrap my head around why. How could you do this to your little girl? It happened, prosecutors say, after Flanagan got the girl from daycare, confronted Watson, who works at this Walmart, then snatched her phone. He later led deputies on a 45-minute chase with Zavea unrestrained while allegedly FaceTiming Watson and Zavea's grandfather showing the girl being assaulted as they tried to reason with him. I know in her mind, she probably was just wondering, like... She said in her own words, they were trying to reason with him. Let me go back to the article. The source. The source says that he asked for the password and was not given the password. He grew angry after he asked for the cell phone password, but didn't receive it. That's literally what it says. What did I do? Like, what, what are you doing this to me for? Like, I love you. Like, why are you hurting me? Curtis Watson was hopeful things might end peacefully. But then he showed me my, the lifeless corpse of my granddaughter. I wouldn't wish that on anyone and to have to go through that type of anguish and pain. A tactical team eventually arrested Flanagan after a standoff, and prosecutors say charges may be upgraded to capital murder once his daughter's autopsy is complete. It's my suspicion that uh, Zavia died due to strangulation, which would not be the result of any sort of blunt force impacts that she sustained in the car driving with the, the defendant. Zavia's mother says she was just trying to end things with Flanagan but is now left without her only child as well.
all I was trying to do was provide for my daughter and like move on. And I guess he just didn't want that. Didn't want that for us. And Man, I don't care if they were in a relationship or not. He has your daughter in his possession. He's crazy. And you know what? It makes it worse. It makes it worse that he has your daughter. Kid so essentially, either he had access to go pick up your daughter from the daycare or he kidnapped her. One or the other. If y'all were going through issues, you weren't in a relationship with him anymore. He shows up. Something's wrong. You should already be on red freaking alert. I'm about to use my last cuss word here in a moment. Whatever he's demanding with your daughter's life on the line, give it up. It don't matter what it is. Because at that point, you're putting everything else behind the place of your daughter. And you're saying, my daughter is the number one priority. I'm going to give up everything else. This is the time and situation to do it. He's asking for a password. Well, that doesn't matter. Well, then give it up if it don't matter. Jesus. Good evening to you. We are hearing from the mother of the two-year-old girl killed at the hands of her own father. Fox 26's Gabby Hart has been following this story from the start, and she joins us live. So, Gabby, what did the family have to say? Oh, I can tell you it was really an emotional interview. This family uh, had tears flowing from their faces as they recalled the moments that the suspect, that they say that suspect, which is the child's father, FaceTimed them, even forcing the mother to watch uh, him injure her child and showing the grandfather that child's bloody and beaten body. Let's pause it right there. I'm going to pull up this from my email. Y'all give me just a second here. And I'll, I'll talk about the GoFundMe here in a moment. But let's talk about this. Let's discuss this together. So I'm going to try my best to show it on the screen now. Y'all keep in mind, we're doing this live. So some of y'all are not going to be able to see this very well. And if you're watching, please hit that thumbs up. We only got a handful of thumbs up. If you're watching this video, please hit that thumbs up because we want more people to participate in this conversation. So if you're here, please, please click that thumbs up. I'm going to try to make this as big on the screen as I can. I know y'all are not going to be able to read it. So just bear with me. Bear with me. So if you've got like super HD, then maybe you can read this. Let's read this together. DeAndre Flanagan. That's the father at the top. Actually, I might be able to. So y'all know I'm talking about him. Can I? crop the top of this off just for a second so I can make this bigger so y'all can maybe read it with me maybe that's a little bit easier to see he just wanted my phone this is a quote he just wanted my phone he's screaming at me telling me what is the passcode tell me the passcode or she's going to get hurt and I'm telling him the passcode over and over, but I guess it just wasn't enough, Watson said. After he got the, the phone and the passcode, he took off with Zavea still in hand. Police say Flanagan took deputies on a 30-mile chase, hitting cars and driving the wrong way. The car eventually came to a stop on Stubner Airline Drive near Veterans Memorial Drive, where officers took Flanagan into custody. She's saying she gave him the password. Here is the controversy in that. Here's the controversy. Here's the controversy. According to people.com, it says, where's it at? Flanagan allegedly grew angry after he asked for the cell phone password but didn't receive it. You know what that means? That means maybe somebody's changing their story. Because I think both of these statements came from the same person. Let me say that again. Both of these 
statements look like they came from the same person. Because her name is, what's her name? Uh, Kirsten? Kirsten Watson. That's the mom. So the mom on the statement that you guys see on my screen, he just wanted my phone. He's screaming at me, telling me what's the password. Tell me the passcode or she's going to get hurt. So she already knew that he was threatening her daughter, like I said. And I'm telling him the passcode over and over, but I guess it wasn't enough. After he got the phone and the password, he took off with Zavea still in hand, which means that he finally left Walmart, hopped in the car, and drove off. They then, some at some point, got in th touch with authorities to try to chase him down on a 30-mile chase. Where is the problem in that? Let's read this one from People.com. DeAndre Flanagan picked up his daughter Zavea Flanagan from her daycare, then went to Walmart where Zavea's mother worked and allegedly demanded to see her cell phone. According to court documents, this is going to be in the court documents. Once she gave him the phone, he allegedly hit her multiple times, then fled with Zavea in a vehicle. She did not say she gave him the password on that article. Let's keep going. A police chase ensued. Eventually, Zavea's mother was identified by ABC 13 as Kirsten Watson, the mother, made contact with Flanagan on FaceTime while using Zavea's grandmother's phone, who was working at Walmart also. However, Flanagan allegedly grew angry. This is her telling the story. Flanagan grew angry after he asked her for the cell phone password, but didn't receive it. So what does that mean? Those are her words. What does that mean? That means that he got the phone and either he forgot the password as he left or he didn't get the password from her before he left. Which is why once they got on FaceTime, he's like, what's the password? So if you gave him the password over and over and over again before he left Walmart, then when he was in the freaking car, then why would you not give it to him again? Every time he asked for it. If he asked for it 115 times, why would you not give it to him 115 times? Somebody talk to me, please. Tell me, am I tripping? My perspective on this has stayed the same. If he asked for it for 200 times to save your daughter's life, because according to the article on the screen... It says that give me the password or she's going to get hurt. You see it on my screen. And I gave him, she said, I'm telling him the passcode over and over, but I guess it wasn't enough. Every time he asked for it, you should have gave it to him every single time. Why? Because we're grown adults and that's not going to Make or break us if he has to hear this, have to hear you give him this code a hundred times more. Then you waste every breath in your body giving it to him in order to save the life of your daughter. At what point do we get tired of giving somebody a password? At what point do we say, I'm not going to give you the password? At some point, why does a phone become more important than your daughter's life? Does my, has my point or perspective changed? My point, my perspective has stayed the same regardless of which article I read. See how that works? That's called using logic. Shout out to Tommy, by the way. Because I got to give him a shout out on that. Logic is when you can take a concept and apply it anywhere and it still follows. It still applies. That's logic. Not arguing emotion. I'm arguing logic. Her face was just covered in blood. He hit her with something really hard. And then he, he called me on FaceTime. And he showed me that she, he choked her on FaceTime as I was on there. And he told me, I said, Trey, that is your daughter. That is your daughter. Stop. That is your daughter. She loves you. 
I care about her. You care about her like that is your daughter. And he told me his exact words was, you only love that man, so you did this to her. Kirsten Watson tells Fox 26 she's still numb and in shock. Around 10 o'clock Monday morning, her child's father, identified by police as 25-year-old DeAndre Flanagan, stormed into her job at Walmart in North Harris County. He had their two-year-old daughter, Zavea Marie, who had just been dropped off at daycare in his arms, and he began screaming at Watson. He just wanted my phone. He's screaming at me, cursing me out, telling me, what's the passcode? Tell me the passcode or she's going to get it. Like, mm -hmm. And I'm telling him the passcode, and I'm telling him it over and over and over, but at the end of the day, I guess it just wasn't enough. After he And you heard that from her own mouth. So every time he asked for it, then just keep repeating the password. I, I've, I've watched my people, black people, you have to repeat yourself, repeat yourself, repeat yourself, repeat yourself. Have you ever heard people get into an argument like that before? I have. I don't know why. People get in that nature of an of a of a conversation and cause I said so, cause I said so, cause I said so, cause I said so. You ever seen anybody argue like that? And I'm just like, like I ain't heard you the first hundred times. Why do you have to keep having to repeat yourself? But if your child's life is on the line, and again, I will say this again. Just continue to repeat the password. If he's saying I don't have it, just give it to him. Is it possible that maybe she could have been giving him the wrong password information so he didn't get into her phone? I think that's a possibility, especially if she's currently in a relationship with somebody else. But here's what you would also have to ask. And I know people don't want me to say this, but that's why I'm DJ Just J. And that's why this is the AFC podcast, because I'm going to put the children first over these silly adult emotions. And here's what I'm going to ask. Why, if you already have a crazy ex-boyfriend, are you in a relationship with another man and your child is less than 24 months old? I got to give y'all the home alone. Y'all remember home alone when he put the, the cologne on? He was like. I got to give y'all that. <laughs> yes, I said it. If your daughter is less than 24 months old, why are you already in another relationship and probably exposing your child to another thug? I'm just basing it on the fact that your current baby daddy is a thug. I know a lot of women that find thugs attractive. They promote the thug culture. So I'm going to base this on what I've seen from 100,000 people of my culture that we love thugs. That's a theory. Not the truth. It's a theory. So I'm theorizing because I keep asking myself, why does this keep happening? Which I think that's the significance in my channel. And I think that's why a lot of people like my videos because I say things that logically make sense. And logically, if we have a large number of people that like this type of behavior, that, that when you when you hear people say, I don't date a man that don't have any any dead bodies on his resume. That's not a facetious statement. That's stuff that people actually believe. If you haven't actually physically ended somebody's life, women won't even date you. Like if they don't even think you have the possibility of being violent towards someone for just no good reason. Somebody stepped on your white Air Force Ones and, and you didn't whoop their ass. They got to die. Somebody gave you the 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 rock Dwayne Johnson side eye I can't do it with my eyebrow. If they gave you the side eye and you didn't whoop they if you didn't beat them up or have your your uh your your click jump them then you ain't about that life, right? You would never let a man disrespect you 
talk about your set, talk about where you from, talk about your neighborhood, make fun of you, crack jokes. And you didn't fight back. You didn't fight fire with fire, even though you're supposed to fight fire with water. But you didn't fight fire with fire. These are men that ain't going to get no sex. These are men that ain't going to get women throwing themselves all, all, all over them and all up in the inbox. All up in the videos. Mm -hmm. The men who are the most violent and not logical are the men who get the women. So I'm naturally saying that her current boyfriend is probably a freaking thug too. And he's already around your daughter. Let's take a look at this GoFundMe. That's just the sad truth. Thank you very much. GoFundMe. Father Charge, well, she took a picture of the news article. And this was put up by James Ratliff. I think that's the uncle, if I'm not mistaken. My two-year-old niece. So that's the uncle. Checked out of school by her biological father when he went to the mother's job and he demanded her phone and password after being unsuccessful. So he didn't have the correct password. <laughs> That's on the GoFundMe. Go look it up. He fled her job with the baby and brutally beat his two-year-old daughter, which resulted in her death. After a 40-minute high-speed chase with the Houston Police Department in Harris County. It said Harris. It's actually Harris County. In a 20-minute stand, uh, SWAT standoff, he was taken into custody. The baby was airlifted to a, near, a nearby Level 1 trauma center where she was pronounced dead. And they're asking for $12,000 in GoFundMe. And you guys know that I'm not against GoFundMe. I'm just against people not having life insurance. I don't care what age they are. All people in the United States of America need to have life insurance. Babies and adults. So that if y'all want to donate to that GoFundMe, you guys know where to find it. Again, I'm not against GoFundMe. I'm just pro-life insurance, okay? So I know not everybody's going to understand where I'm coming from, but I want somebody to articulate their argument if you're going to counter what I'm saying. But please let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section. Very, very difficult story to talk about. But let me uh, let the last little bit of this video play. Took off with Zavea in hand. Police say Flanagan took deputies on a 30 mile chase. The car eventually came to a stop on Stubner Airline Drive near Veterans Memorial, where officers took Flanagan into custody uninjured. But little Zavea required CPR until life flight arrived. She died at the hospital. She was just such a happy baby, and I just know she's at peace. Watson says in the week leading up to this incident, she had to contact police on three different occasions about Flanagan, but she was told there was nothing they could do. The first day he took, he took my child, like I was giving her a bath in the tub. He stormed in, and he took her like out the tub. She wasn't even dressed, and he just took her out the house and drove away in a car. We've been going our separate ways. And I let him be, but he just, he couldn't let me be. He couldn't let me be happy. He couldn't let me move on with my life. His family now sharing their story. Hope and nobody wants to admit. And I'm, I don't even know if the grandfather, man, do you, I, I, I don't know. Because me being a father, and I know my daughter is probably going to have some, 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 a journey. I'll say a journey. In her dating life, we're going to probably have to have some conversations, but it makes me wonder if this man has ever had a conversation with his daughter about the type of men that you date and the type of men that you should avoid because the type of men that you date could put you in situations that you're constantly having to defend yourself that are irrational, that are violent. Maybe he's told her, maybe she's grown, and maybe she just does what she want to do. She's grown, so she maybe she don't listen to her dad anymore. But I would hope, knowing the fact that she has her father in her life, that he's probably had those conversations with her. It helps someone else. And I wonder about how many others of this is around the world right now, around the United States right now, that's having the same problem. This in the city, this in the state. We got to help one another. I like that he said that. I like that he said that. And again, shout out to him because I do believe that with him looking to be an old school uh, young man, he looks like a young man too, that he probably comes from the old school and understanding how women should be treated. He probably has 
raise his daughter the best that he possibly can to make sound, solid decisions. But some kind, sometimes kids are just going to go their own way. They're going to do what they want to do, especially once they cross that proverbial threshold of being grown. And they're just going to do grown things. They're going to do what they want to do, what, what feels right instead of what is right. Let me say that again. They're going to do what feels right as opposed to what actually is right. The fact that this man and everybody that I've heard from in this story said that sh- I gave him the password. I gave him the password. It sounds like you gave him the incorrect password. If one, he's saying he didn't get it. And number two, if it's incorrect. Well, let me guys ask you a question. If the password to my phone is 0134 and I tell you it's 0022, did I just give you the right password to the phone or was I unsuccessful? Hmm? So I would classify that as if I didn't give you the right information that I didn't get it. I would just flat out say I didn't get the password. I got the incorrect password. You gave me a password. You gave me an answer. But it wasn't correct. And I think that's part of where maybe that's just my fatherly instinct. Because look, let me show y'all something. That was the uncle's statement. Let me show y'all something. Knowing that this father looked like he's relatively young compared to me. Like I just think these folks are young. This mother looks to be young. It didn't give her age. But I'm going to assume that she's in her Younger 20. She's probably about 22 years old. So I'm literally old enough to be. The woman on the right's father. Believe it or not. I might not look like I'm that old. But I actually am. So maybe I'm speaking from a fatherly perspective. And I'm saying. My daughter probably gave him false information. That's part of that fatherly intuition. If you listen to what a person said, listen to the story, decipher it, and then you have to use your discernment to figure out what the truth actually is. Because this is, is this is a very traumatic situation. And no, I don't expect for a person who, through, who's been through some trauma to be 100% honest. I think that they're probably going to try to put themselves in the best light, which is also why the story actually changed based on two different articles that I read. Those stories were not the exact same stories. They were different stories and that's probably why because that person was probably traumatized and probably was trying to put themselves in the best light and gave some information that was not entirely accurate. It wasn't accurate from beginning to end. But again, this is why I think that people who exemplify his type of behavior, this is the whole point of this because we're holding everybody accountable. This is why people that behave like him act like him, have a record like him, have tendencies like him, should never get pussy, should never have relationships, should never have children, should never be babysitters, should never be around youth, period. They should be castigated. They should be outed. But guess who that starts with? That starts with the birth givers that starts with the creators that starts with the mothers that starts with the women and that's part of where i give the information and women have to dissect it women have to absorb it and women have to employ it i say that because i love you all and i will hope that no other child has to go through this and i would hope that i could stop today and stop telling these stories these silly stories about these silly love triangles and love and hate and bull crap and i would hope that that ends for the betterment of our children we put the children first that's what makes my channel different that's what makes my commentary different you don't get this from anywhere else that's our perspective. That's our logic. The AFC podcast where we put the children first. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Thank you.